Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. We are going to do step number one of solving the Rubik's Cube. I am first of all scrambling the cube at least 20 times so that it can be completely scrambled. The first step of solving the cube is forming what's called the daisy. And I'll show you how to do that. Step number one is about completing what looks like a flower. This six-sided structure has a bottom, a top, and four outward-facing sides. Why does my cube has, te uh, has uh, textures to it as opposed to colors? Because I cannot see the colors, and more importantly, the textures are a lot more helpful in solving the cube for me. How do I know how to compose or how to create a daisy? What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take two opposite center stickers so that I can create the daisy. Two opposite center sticker textures or colors. One thing to keep in mind that the edge pieces that are two-sided and the corner pieces that are three-sided, they move all the way around the cube. However, the center piece does not, as you can see. Therefore, the center sticker, which is a one-sided sticker or one-sided piece, is going to determine the entire face color or texture. Okay, so that's very helpful. The other thing to keep in mind is that two opposite center stickers are related to each other because they're attached on an axle on the inside. That's why they don't move. Therefore, if I do my daisy, I'm going to uh, use the two opposite center stickers. On most cubes, white and yellow are on two opposite faces and that is why it is called the daisy, where the yellow center is in the bottom, and it, uh, sorry, it's in the center, I should say, of our daisy, and it is surrounded by four petals that are white. I've decided that I'm going to use two textures right here. I have a Velcro on the top, and I also have a uh, stone sticker on the bottom. So those are the two textures I'm going to use. In order to create my daisy, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the petals, which are on the bottom, center sticker which are my velcro and i'm going to rotate them so that they end up being as petals of my so-called flower here's what i'm doing i'm making an effect just like this my opposite center sticker on the top is going to remain as the center of the flower and i'm going to use the edge pieces or the petals of the flower using a texture of the opposite center sticker which is the velcro i will keep on rotating the cube any way I can in order to bring four edge pieces to the top. So far I have three petals and I'm going to keep on rotating the cube and keep on feeling where else do I have any more petals. If my petal is on an outward facing side, then all I need to do is take this piece and rotate it once towards the top. But when I do, I'm also displacing the top sticker. Therefore, rotating my upper face is important so that I can create a spot that is ready to receive my petal. Right now, I have three edge pieces or that are in fact the petals on my top uh, that are forming the daisy. And my last piece that is not the Velcro is ready to receive the Velcro itself. I'm going to rotate the face that is on the side upwards and what I have now just done is created what's called the daisy on the top. Once again, I have two opposite center stickers, two opposite colors or textures forming the daisy, which means that my Velcro is forming the petals. And if I look at the top face, if I examine the top face, I have positions north, south, east, and west, which are my edge pieces, with the texture of a Velcro, and they're surrounding the centerpiece of the opposite texture. This is the purpose of step number one, which is to form a daisy on the top. And the second step will be to take this daisy on the top and to convert it to a cross on the bottom. We will cover that in step number two. In the meantime, enjoy solving the cube. And remember, this is a cumulative process. If you make a mistake, you can always go back and redo it. I'll see you soon. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to show you the first step on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. 
I'm going to use the method that most of us have known for years, which is the CFOB method. And I'm going to show you the first step. And the first step is to create something very simple. It's a flower, it's a daisy. I am scrambling my cube right now so that I can show you how to create the daisy. I'm going to take two opposite center stickers. This is going to be my bottom and this is going to be my top. My bottom center sticker is smooth and it has no texture to it at all. So I'm going to look for the opposite two colors or textures. In this case, that's my center sticker and this is the bottom. The opposite face, which is the top, seems to have this rhinestone, this what feels like a stone on the top. These two opposite textures are going to form what is known as the daisy. I've decided that this is going to be my center and I'm going to rotate the cube any way I can so that I can add pieces to it that are part of the petals. This means I will have my bottom, which is the stone, surrounded by the flat stickers because I've decided I'm using the opposite center sticker. That's what we need to do in order to create a daisy. The daisy will be surrounded by four petals that are matching to the opposite center sticker. Rotate any face you wish in any way you want so that we do get the petals on the top. How can I do that? I can examine my outward facing sides for stickers. Oh, I have one right here. If I take it from the front and I rotate it, I would be displacing the edge piece that's at the top. Therefore, I need to rotate my upper face counterclockwise or clockwise so that the petal on the top can receive it. In other words, I don't want to displace the existing petal. I want to put it in a place that already has something that's non-petal, something that is a different color. Now, if I rotate my face that has the edge piece once, then I end up having my petal up at the top. So here we are, we have four petals now in positions of north, south, east, and west surrounding our center sticker. It's a pixelated way of viewing the flower. And if we look at the bottom again, this is our center sticker, and that is going to be the, going to be the texture or the color on the opposite face on the top. It is surrounding the center sticker of the opposite face, the top center sticker. This is the first step of solving the cube. That is to create a daisy. Generally, we do that on the top, and after we have our daisy on the top, we will convert it to a cross on the bottom. Enjoy solving the cube, and I'll see you soon. Good morning. We're going to talk about the first step on making the cube, which is called making the daisy. To do that, we're going to examine one face and we're going to have this as our end result. The center piece, which is a single sticker, is going to have only one center or one sticker to it, and it will be surrounded on its east, west, north, and north and south edges, edge pieces, with petals. This effect is going to create what looks like a daisy or a flower. It is very similar to a cross, the only difference is that a cross is uniform all around. That means in positions that are facing north, south, east, and west, those corners are going to be the same as the center piece. The four edge pieces facing north, south, east, and west are going to be the same as the center sticker. That is the definition of a cross. A daisy, however, is going to have a center piece that will be different. This center piece of a daisy is going to be the center piece of the opposite face. The two opposite faces are related. Therefore, if on the bottom I have a particular sticker or texture, let's assume it's yellow in the center, or let's assume it's white in the center on the bottom, then the top is going to have white petals and the opposite center is going to be yellow. So yellow and white centers are always opposites of each other on the cube. 
I'll show you how to make the cue or make the, the daisy based on looking at a scrambled cue. This is called step one and it is a foundation of solving the Rubik's Cube. We have a center on our top face that needs to be surrounded by four petals. How do I determine what petals they should be? What color should the edge pet pieces be, color or texture? To know the two colors that I have to work with, I'm going to look at the two opposite faces and I'm going to only focus on the center pieces. Here I have what feels like a felt sticker in the center on the bottom and on the top I have what feels almost like a little raised sticker. Okay, it's a, I believe it's a rhinestone. Therefore, my daisy is going to have a rhinestone in the center and on the east, west, north, south of the same face I'm going to have felt stickers surrounding it. How do I position my petals into place, into the sticker, uh, into the top face? I need to find a face that if I rotate it, it will take it from the side or from the bottom to the top. If I perform a move that allows the petal to be on the outer edge, on the outside face, then that is not what I want to do. I want to bring the petals from the sides or from the bottom by rotating a face counterclockwise or clockwise once or twice so that it will bring it to the top position. Right now, I have rotated a face where my edge piece, or the petal, is now in the top face. This means that I have one petal in place surrounding my center piece. Once I have a petal in place, I want to keep it there and I don't want to move it. There is only four petals that I have to solve for, so I'm going to look for other ways that I can have four petals or four edge pieces of the opposite color centerpiece surrounding my top center. What else can I do to take the pieces that are here on the edges on the front and to bring it up? I want to make sure that I rotate the upper face clockwise or counterclockwise for a reason. If I was to take one side and rotate it upwards if I'm going to displace or take away an edge piece that was already on the top, I don't want to do that. I want to rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise so that there is a new position ready, ready to receive the pedal in its proper place. Once I rotate my face again from the side to the top by 90 degrees, then I'm going to now have a second petal in its place. I will continue to rotate the upper face so that it is possible to receive all the petals in its place. I notice here that I have a face that if I rotate it counterclockwise away from me, I will have a third petal in place, which is wonderful. Now, my edge pieces that are on the sides are done, but I'm still missing one petal. That means the petal is probably somewhere at the bottom. There it is. If I rotate my bottom edge piece so that it comes to the top, I would need to rotate that face two times, not, not just once. So I'm going to rotate it once and then once again so that the petal that was on the bottom, the edge piece that was on the bottom, was brought up all the way to the top. Now, I have a finished daisy, and that is I have four edge pieces, which are the petals, located on the north, south, east, and west, that are exactly the same. So my four edge pieces are uniform. That's all I'm concerned about is do I have four edge pieces that are the same? And they are surrounded by a center that should be the opposite color of the petals. How do I know that? If I examine my centerpiece on the bottom, one more time, I have my centerpiece on the bottom. That texture is exactly what I need to have for the petals. So now I'm con con confirming that my bottom is a felt piece. And if I rot rotate my cube and I check the top face, those are the textures of the petals.
the centerpiece of two opposite faces is always important for making a daisy, which is to create a, an effect of a flower on the cube. And the cube is, the first step of, of solving the cube is to make what's called the daisy. Uh, and then the second step will be to create the cross. Okay, join us in order to do this together. And so that we can explain it in person and more importantly, that you can have a more tactile experience. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. I have here the cube. And I'm going to show you how to do the first step and the second step. The first step of solving the cube using the CFOB method is creating the daisy and the second step is to convert it to a cross. The first step, the daisy, usually is formed on the top and the second step, the cross, is usually formed on the bottom. I'm going to take two opposite center stickers and I'm going to decide what color or texture they are and those are the ones that are going to form my daisy or the flower. I have here on the top a rhinestone that's in the center, the one-sided sticker, and on the bottom I have a felt. So those are my two textures that I will be using to create the daisy on the top. This is step number one. I found one outward facing sticker that is part of an edge piece and if I rotate this once I will bring it up to the top so it's part of a petal. So I now have my bottom center sticker as a petal on the top matching to the bottom center sticker and that is why this is going to be the petal. I will continue to look for outward facing sides to see if I have any more outward facing stickers that can be taken from the side to the top. I have another one right here so there's my second petal. I will keep on solving and rotating the cube in any way I can just so that I have those four edge pieces on the top. Now, I do have two right here. What I'm going to do is take my outward facing side and make sure that my petals that are here are in place so that they can be taken from the side to the top. If I rotate this side, I'm going to displace already a petal that's there. So, in order not to do that, I'm going to rotate the face, the upper face, as many times as possible so that I create a spot for it to be received on the top. Now that the upper face has been rotated just enough times, it allows me to create a spot that is ready to receive the petal on the top. I'm going to take my edge piece from the side and bring it up to the top and I'm able to do the same thing with the other one and that is the petal or the sticker that is on the side on the front face is going to be brought up to the top. Now I have the daisy. How do I know that? I could potentially form this structure or this pattern on just about any face, perhaps even with uh, any other sticker or color. But I know that it's accurate because my two opposite center stickers, the textures or colors, are the ones that are used. So I have the opposite bottom center sticker as my petals and the center is surrounded by the color or texture of the opposite center sticker. This is the purpose of step number one. It is to create a daisy. Once we have the daisy, which we would generally we would have on the top face, we would then rotate it to the bottom and convert that to a cross on the bottom, which is part of step two. This is the foundation of solving the cube, and I hope you enjoy this. I hope you love solving the cube as much as I do, and I hope to see you soon. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to learning how to solve the Rubik's Cube. It is a six-sided structure, and it is something that has puzzled people all over the world for years, in fact, for generations. But it is possible to solve. Many people believe that it is not at all. But I'm here to tell you that it is. And it requires eight steps if you're using the CFOB method, which is using 
the idea of creating a cross, solving for the first floor, then using the orientation and permutation. That's called the CFOP method. The first step of solving the cube is creating a daisy, and the second step is creating a cross. The cross is always created on the bottom, and that is our foundation. That is how the cube rests and stays on for the rest of the solve. So once you have the cross in step two, that stays on the bottom, and that becomes our bottom face. Generally speaking, we form our daisy on the top, on the roof, so that we can drop it basically from the top and into position on the bottom. So we are going to focus on step number one, how to create a daisy. What is a daisy? First of all, this is the solved cube. So we have six different sides, front, back, left, right, the top and the bottom, that are completed, that are solved. And the key to solving the cube is that we're not solving for the stickers or one side, we're solving for pieces. For instance, here is an edge piece, which is a two-sided sticker. So it matches to the center sticker on the top, but it also matches to the face that is right now facing us, that's front. Therefore, edge pieces have two stickers. Corner pieces have three stickers, and they need to be positioned in such a way that they're part of a finished face, which is the front, as well as my left, and the top as well. So we've got three sides, or three different textures or colors that this corner piece belongs to. This is its final resting spot. So when we're solving for pieces, we're solving to make sure that yes, the bottom is solved, but also that we have the corresponding first floor finished. If we think of the cube as a building, okay, this is the key. We can think of this as being the first floor, the bottom, the basement. These are our little windows and doors on the first floor that are outward facing. And then on the second floor, we have more little windows and balcony doors that need to be solved. And then when we move on to the third floor, our penthouse, we will in fact be solving on the top for the shingles. And then we will be doing our outward facing windows and balcony doors, okay? So step one is about creating the daisy. Daisy, generally speaking, is formed on the top. So it is a flower. It is a flower that is simply made out of four petals, okay? So we have a center sticker that's surrounded by four petals. If I was to look at my top face right now, I have button number five, which is the center sticker or the center piece, which is one-sided sticker or one-sided piece, I should say. It has one sticker, one color, one texture. It is surrounded by four petals. Those are in positions east, west, north, and south, okay? And just so you know, they can also be compared to a numerical keypad. I'd like to think of it as if we do compare it to a numerical keypad, then button five is in the middle. It always has that little dot, um, a little raised button that we can feel for orientation purposes. And that is why above it, we're going to have button number eight and below it, button number two. Therefore, the petals of a daisy are in positions four, six, eight, and two. Those four petals are going to match in color or texture, and they will be surrounding a centerpiece that is going to be different. How do I determine if my edge piece, or, or sorry, that my edge piece, what color should the edge piece be? In other words, what color should the petals be? Take a look at this. I can move just about anything on the cube. That means the edge pieces and the corner pieces, they do move. However, the center stickers do not. The center stickers essentially determine what the final color is going to be of that face, okay? And just so you know, each face has its own sticker, has its own centerpiece, and that is going to determine the final color, the final texture. How do I know what color I would be making of the daisy? I'm going to always consider two opposite faces. For example, the top and the bottom. Here I have a smooth sticker in the center, and here I have a sticker that has a different texture. It has a stone to it. I've decided to put stickers that are textured on there since the colors are not that important to me. 
The idea is to use two opposite center stickers and decide what color or texture that should be. Now that we know we have two opposite colors or textures that are smooth as well as the stone, we would be creating a daisy that is either stone in the center and smooth pieces on the outside, or be at the petals, or we would be creating a daisy that has smooth center in the middle and the textured stones at the four edge pieces on the side. Okay, so this is the idea of how we would solve and make the daisy. We want two opposite faces to be forming what's called a flower or a cross. We are ignoring our corner pieces. We are only focusing on the petals. Okay, so the petals are in positions east, west, north, and south. If I scramble the cube completely and I rotate it at least 20 times, I'm going to have a completely scrambled cube and I'm starting from fresh. All right, I'm going to choose my two textures that are, here we go. I'm going to use this as my centerpiece, which is this raised, I believe it's a jewel. And the opposite center sticker is a felt. Those are my two textures that I'll be working with. If I've got my center sticker, already chosen and it's the opposite side then this will be my petal remember i've chosen the opposite center sticker to be the petals because they need to match so i'm going to do what i can to bring anything that feels like this texture which matches the bottom center to the top if i have any of those petals so to speak which in my case is the felt sticker on the outside faces then i will rotate that face just once to bring it from the side to the top. I now have two petals in place and I'm going to look for any more petals on the outside facing side, so they're not there. But if they're not here, that means they are probably somewhere on the bottom. In other words, if I do not have them on the outward facing sides, then I need to look on the bottom. And yes, here are my edge pieces. There is one right here. If I rotate it right now, Right above it, there's already a petal. So I need to rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise so that I can take the piece that's on the bottom, my edge piece, the petal, and if I rotate my corresponding face twice, I will be bringing the petal to the top, but I'm not displacing anything. In fact, I added one more petal, so now I have three surrounding my centerpiece. Now, for the last piece, I have again my edge piece or my petal that needs to come up to the top. If I bring it up right away just like this, I am displacing another piece and again I have one on the bottom and one on the top. So to avoid that I need to rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise until I bring it to position so the piece at the top that is supposed to have the petal doesn't have it and the piece at the bottom does. Therefore I'm going to rotate that side twice so that I do have the petal up at the top. I'm going to take away the corners just for a second so we can focus on what the idea of a daisy is. All right, so the daisy is a flower that has four stickers, four edges. The petals are important since the texture or color of these needs to be the opposite center sticker of the two opposite faces. Here we have two opposite center stickers, a felt on the bottom center sticker and a center sticker that is the stone. If my bottom center is felt, then my edge pieces or the petals at the top are going to be felt as well. So I now have four edge pieces or four petals that are surrounding the centerpiece and that are forming the daisy. This is the first step of solving the cube. And normally we would keep that at the top just for a short time until we transfer this daisy to a cross on the bottom. 
we will be converting our daisy from the top to the cross on the bottom. Enjoy solving the cube and I'll see you soon. Welcome again. We're going to talk about understanding how the two faces are related to each other. The top and the bottom faces are related to each other in one way. Opposite faces are important for knowing how to do the daisy. Here I have a bottom sticker in the center and I have a top sticker in the center. Those two textures or colors are going to help to identify how to form the daisy. Because the center pieces only have one sticker, they're attached to an axle on the inside of the cue and therefore they don't actually move. So it may appear we're, as though we're moving it, but we're not. We're only rotating the edge pieces and the corner pieces. The stickers in the center or the pieces in the center that have only one side or one sticker do not rotate. That is why the bottom and the center are related to each other since they are always fixed. So the fact that they're fixed means is that they are always going to determine the final color or texture of that face. So from now on, from as we're solving for step number two and onwards, we're going to enjoy the fact that the center stickers of every face that are on opposite ends are going to help us to identify how to form a cross and how to form a daisy. The difference between the daisy and the cross is that the daisy has four edge pieces that are the same and the center piece is different. So let me just make sure that I show you the daisy. Here it is. My daisy has four corner pieces, four edge pieces that are surrounding the center. How do I know what colors I should have? As I mentioned, the center piece on the top and the center piece on the bottom are related. Therefore, my center piece on the top is going to be surrounded by the color or the texture on the edge pieces of the bottom center piece. This is all you need to remember when you're creating a daisy. The cross is essentially the same as the daisy. The only difference is that the center piece is exactly the same as the rest of the edge pieces. In the cross, we're going to have five pieces that are the same on the same face. And in the daisy, we're going to have four edge pieces and a completely opposite center piece. Enjoy making the daisy, and I'll see you soon. Two minutes, two minutes. Stop recording video.